Arataki Honey is a family business run at two North Island locations with beekeeping, honey processing and export, as well as tourism and retailing among its activities. Arataki Honey owner Ian Berry has been beekeeping for over 70 years. Well, Arataki Honey began here in 1944. Dad bought this property for £2,000. It was nine and a quarter acres. He'd been a beekeeper for a number of years in Nuriha. So he, he had the basics, and it was just a matter of uh, learning the business, how to build up a beekeeping business. We're now running around a bit over 20,000 hives. There's about 8,000 odd in Hawke's Bay. The rest are managed by my brother and his family over at Waitapu at near Rotorua. And they run bees from Coromandel to Southland. They've got about 4,000 hives down Gore. We employ about 40 people here, 16 of which are beekeepers. We have factory staff packing honey, we have the shop staff, we have people on sales. And uh, My brother at Rotorua normally has more staff than that because he does a lot of exporting of queen bees and particularly package bees to Canada. He's also developed market in Scotland for package bees. We produce a thousand tonnes of honey per year it's our main income stream and instead of selling it as a commodity honey, we want to sell it in the, in the most valuable form, which is a retail pack, an export pack. The success of Arataki is the passion for beekeeping, first of all. Both Ian and his brother Russell in the Rotorua division. Anything you can do with bees, basically we're involved with live bee exports, honey production, pollination, beeswax, pollen, propolis. Exporting started with Ian's father, Percy, who really pioneered export of honey away from that single desk seller under the Honey Marketing Authority, particularly with comb honey, went to some very unusual places such as Yemen and uh, places New Zealand wasn't really exporting to, so he was a, certainly a pioneer. Someone's input like that always stays with a company, it's part of a culture and that culture survived and being built on. Markets change, we used to sell a lot to the UK, we're selling a lot more now to Asia, to the United States, but certainly the, the potential in Asia is huge and we want to be forefront of that. The future prospects from a marketing side are, are excellent. I think there's good demand for New Zealand honey. We're producing a premium product that people are paying a premium price for. Our risks, I guess, are diseases in our bees and the health of our bees. The threat of overseas honey into New Zealand is the threat of bringing in diseases that we don't have in our honeybees. It's a serious threat, not just to honey production, but to pollination and the food that's provided or assisted by the work of the honeybee. So to New Zealand, that is the threat. Pollination is an important part of our business. It is a regular income that happens every year. Honey can be a good year or a bad year. It does cross over a little bit in terms of when we should be producing honey. Many of our hives are still doing work in pollination, so there's a bit of crossover there. So it is an important part, particularly in Hawke's Bay, because of the orcharding that's carrying on here. And we like to see ourselves as assisting that business as well. We have a number of beekeepers who have been with us for many years, 30 years. We tend to take on two or three new beekeepers each year. We like to train them ourselves because we have our own methods. Various beekeeping companies have different methods. This yard of bees in here we've just got prepared for kiwi fruit pollination. So they have to be a certain standard, so many frames of bees, so much brood to be the right strength to go into the orchards. They have a feeding trough put in the top so they can be fed every couple of days to stimulate them to uh, pollinate the flowers. We're checking that they've got a good laying queen. Um, there's plenty of bees, good strength of bees, and, and especially a healthy queen. We also check they've got enough stores in them to get them through so they're not going to starve. 
Checking a young bee hatching, we're also looking for any wing deformation because of varroa. If there is a varroa problem, the wings will be chewed off, and that's a big problem, so we have to keep a close eye on that. Yeah, this little guy's fine, nice healthy bee. These are some queens that have come down from the Rotorua division. They came down overnight by courier. The first thing we do when we get them, we unpack them, and then we give them a drink of water. We normally do this each day. These queens are quite okay for ending up to a week before they go out to the bees, although we try to get them out as soon as we can. Here, of course, is the candy, where the bees, that's their food. There's one queen bee, a young one, and uh, a number of accompanying worker bees that look after the queen. She can't survive on her own, she can't keep warm enough for one thing. But by putting them all together and closely packing them, they generate their own heat. They've only just started to lay probably within the last week. They would have hatched out about uh, two or three weeks ago. They've got mated, they've started to lay, and, uh, and they've been caged up. We also requeen our hives either annually or biennially. Queen would probably live normally about three years, and they would either swarm or supersede and you finish up with a young queen. The queen lays all the eggs. She's the mother of all the bees in the hive, and they can lay up to their, at least their own weight of eggs in a day. So they're basically in the egg-making factory. <laughs> We've always stuck to the principle of, we like to see the hive numbers coming up gradually, not great spurts, but making sure they don't go down in the poor seasons. And there are odd times when they've gone down a little. Just keep them gradually coming up, and uh, I think that's been the sound principle. If you do try a different way of doing things, try it in a quiet way to start with, rather than getting too big all of a hurry. You can make mistakes that way, and they can be a bit expensive. I keep on saying, no lifetimes long enough for a beekeeper to learn all there is to learn about bees. And the longer you've been at it, the more you realise how little you really know. This programme was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.